It's December 11, 2015. I'm Dana Durnford, also known as the Nuclear Proctologist org, and you can find my videos and Fukushima presentations at livestream.com. Didn't get everything smeared to smearing in. And so if you go to livestream.com, type in Dana Durnford, you'll see my moniker picture, iconic picture. Hi to everybody in the chat room. Elaine, Kate, and we can bring that up and say hi very quick to everybody. We got a really good show this morning. And let me do some fancy stuff here and make that more legible. Hi, Terry Ann, Bob. Um, I'm going to run back over here. <laughs> I got to close that window first. Hey, hang on. Hi, everybody. Daniel, Nova, Elaine is down there. I see. I'm trying to get to the bottom. And come back up because the comments start the same as me. Hi, Elaine, Rattleshark, Kate, Bob, Starlight, Jan Brooks. 100% uh, of the total spent fuel pool released number four. I actually got that stuff, dear Jan. Uh huh. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad you got it, dear, too. Trust me. Hi, Rattleshark, Terry, and Bob, David. Thank you, buddy. Um, Nip Killer. Nova, Daniel's Divine Rights. Here we go. Woo! We, we snuck through everybody that managed to get in their comments right away. Let me shoot that over to Dana. And Dana Durnford, the nuclear proctologist. So let's get on with it, shall we? And so we're going to talk about two subjects today. <laughs> so one subject is going to be ISIS. ISIL. And I'll get into that in a second. And the other subject, because I'm still working like a dog to get through all of this, is Fukushima. And so we got a really big show lined up for everybody today. We're going to kick it off with a short video to introduce Fukushima for about one minute. And then we're going to come back and talk about ISIS. And just for anybody that's not familiar with it, now this video was shot 11 days after Fukushima and it's Keith Snow, he's a journalist, and he's uh, extraordinarily talented, uh, has his master's in engineering, has worked in many nuclear plants. But I want you to hear the stunning statement that he makes. And so we'll just play that clip for one minute. Have pet peeves. I have major psychotic fucking hatreds, okay? This is Guns and Butter. Something happened in yeah. This is what we need to worry about most in the world is the um, the loss of offsite electrical power. So we've got a nuclear power plant here in Vermont, Vermont Yankee, and uh, offsite electrical power is the problem. What we're talking about in in New England or in California or in Pennsylvania or in Wisconsin with any one of these nuclear plants sitting next to some body of water is not a tsunami coming in on the Connecticut River at Vermont Yankee, but it's loss of offsite power. It's a blackout, a, an electrical blackout. Suddenly there's no electricity. Does that ever happen? Okay. California, the Midwest, and New England have all had major blackouts in the last 50 years, including the last 10 years, including the last two years. Well, the nuclear industry and the, the American media have been saying, well, it can't happen in America. Clearly, there's not going to be a tsunami so far inland in Vermont that's going to wipe out the Vermont nuclear power station. So the argument is true, and it's false at the same time, because it's not about the tsunami, and it's not about the earthquake. It's about the loss of off-site power. I'm Bonnie Faulkner. Today on Guns and Butter, Keith Harmon Snow. Today's show, Nuclear Apocalypse in Japan. Keith Snow is an independent journalist, war correspondent, and photographer. He has worked for more than a decade to contest official narratives on war crimes, crimes against humanity, and genocide, while also working as a genocide investigator and consultant to the United Nations and other international... And so, we're going to cover uh, about to spend fuel pools again today. And we're also going to cover about Iraq. And so what we got coming up here in Afghanistan and ISIS and Syria. Okay, 
And I think it's really important that everybody hear this narrative, even if they don't want to hear the narrative, because it's not my narrative, it's the reality of it. And so this next clip is a veteran's um, benefit, and they're talking about war and what they feel about war and their experience. Uh, and so they have this artist there known as Jim Page. And he tells a really unique story that goes right to the heart of music and war. And I think that's so important that I'm going to play that today. And I think you'll take a lot away from that as we go through the rest of this video. This video is an extended video today. We have a lot to cover. We better get busy, Dana. So. Peeves. I have major psychotic fucking hatred. Hey. Okay? <laughs> That's not what I was clicking on, Dean, huh? Pike Street Market one day about... Here we go. Oh, I don't know, six years ago or something, whenever it was. And a recruiter came through. And we saw him hand... I saw him handing out little... Little uh, refrigerator magnets and ballpoint pens to children. Twelve years old, fourteen years old. I lost it. I just completely... Well, he lost it, too, but he had a lot more control than I did. I completely lost it. And I... I nearly... I, I almost attacked the man, and I called him a child molester. I remember calling him a child molester. I said, you get out of here. And we ran him basically out of the market. And then Jim went down later on and actually talked with the market authorities about it. And they said, no, they're not allowed in here. So the Pike Street market is a uh, recruiter-free zone. <laughs> yes, indeed. Anyway, um, there's a... F I, there's a great old, I'm a little, I'm really tired. I've been working on a recording project and I've gotten like very little sleep for the last like however long it's been. So my mind is like putty. But I remember when the, 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 the shock and awe thing went over. Don't you love those words they use? Like it's like fun, like it's some kind of like game, like it's really cool to blow all these people up. Shock and awe, isn't that just like a disco party or something? And Anyway, when that's, I, I just went, I flipped. It's like, I got to do something. You've got it. This is, this is a tool. People have different tools. This is mine. David uses it too. So does George. It's like, it's a tool that we use, you know? So we were raised with this song when Johnny is marching home, you know, and it's hurrah, hurrah, and everybody's, the, 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 they're marching back from the Civil War. There's not a mark on them. There's no PhD. There, there's no post-traumatic stress. There's no, there's no wounds. Everybody's fine. The, the streets are lined with dogs and children and apple pies, and it's a beautiful thing. That's what we were raised on. I was raised on. Well, there's a, the, the, the song came from an old Irish folk song, which was much more to the point. And it was uh, called Johnny, I Hardly Knew You. And the chorus goes, with your guns and drums and drums and guns, the enemy nearly slew you. Oh, Johnny, dear, you look so queer. Johnny, I hardly knew you. You know, the guy comes back and he's not the same. He doesn't even now have all his body parts. And it's his wife talking to him, saying, who's going to take care of the children now? Who's going to keep our lives going together now? Look at what we're going to have to put you out with a bowl to beg. Because it's an amazing song. It's just an amazing song. And it was an Irishman, in all fairness, <laughs> who rewrote it for money, for America, to have a pro-war song so that when, so that, you know, the public sentiment could keep going. You know, nobody's free of this crap. Anybody can do it. They did it to their own song. But this guy did it to his own national song. So I figured this would become our national song, Johnny Kids Marching Home. So I figured I would take it and I would rewrite it back into its original intent, but update it. I saved two of the original verses. I took out the part about hooray, hooray, or haru, haru, because I don't talk like that. You know, and I'm not going to sing like I don't talk. So it's just, you know, and it's just called When Johnny Kids Marching Home. And it goes like this. marching home again when Johnny comes marching home again when Johnny comes marching home again well I'll go out and welcome him never mind the shape he's in and I'll ask him how the fighting went we'll ask him how the fighting went we'll ask him how the fighting went and how he likes the president 
casualties are an accident. And we'll beat our drums and wave our flags. We'll beat our drums and wave our flags. We'll beat our drums and wave our flags as great and grand and glorious rags. The ones that put on the body bags. And later on when the sickness comes. Later on when the sickness comes. Later on when the sickness comes from chemicals and uranium. We'll wring our hands and we'll all play dumb. who did their part the veterans who did their part see the veterans who did their part and came back home with a purple heart walking around with a shopping cart see where all the legs he used to run where all the legs he used to run where all the legs he used to run before you went to carry your gun well I'm afraid your dancing days are done you have no arm, you have no leg. You have no arm, you have no leg. You have no arm, you have no leg. You're an armless, legless, chickenless egg. They'll have to put you out with a bowl to beg. Kill the man, they'll kill us back. We'll kill the man, they'll kill us back. We'll kill the man, they'll kill us back. They say it's always been like that. Yeah, all for the banker and his money sack. So tip your hat and take a bow. And tip your hat and take a bow. Tip your hat and take a bow and get on with your life somehow. They're taking your little brother now. Boosted the audio in that time. I hope that didn't smurf up anybody out there. Uh, and so the internet, of course, today is Troll Isol Day. And uh, you can choose any of them words if you like and get out there and knock your socks off. Or you can think about some of the things I'm saying today and some of the things that other people have said. And if we go into the internet, we can find uh, this person here, who I think needs no induction, uh, introduction. We're going to play her clip. Now, this is a recent video of what she talked about refugees. And just bear with me for one second. In addition to the increased training requirements, let me move that over a little tiny bit for everybody. I'm going to make that a little bit smaller for everybody. <laughs> Dina, do your shit before you get online. In addition to the increased training requirements, the global war on terror, terrorism, ter ter terrorism has resulted in increased expenditures. As an example, operations in Iraq in the past year resulted in the expenditure, interesting word, of 72 million rounds. But no civilians were killed, right? 72 million rounds, but no civilians. <laughs> Okay, or about 6% of this uh, fiscal year's production, 6%. Current expenditures in Iraq are reported at 5.5 million rounds. 5.5 million rounds. A month. After a month, for nine years. And so, that's why you've got 22 veterans committing suicide every day. Um, that's 80,000 in a decade. 
to get 10,000 Taliban, right? And then you got 290,000 rapes in the military in that same time frame, 29,000 rapes reported, reported now a year. Alrighty. Now you got millions dead, millions missing, millions in refugee camps. Uh, Afghanistan I'm talking about right now and then you got 5 million orphans to get 10,000 Taliban and then you went to Iraq and you've done the exact same thing millions dead, millions missing, millions in refugee camps we're going to cover that coming up here and so when you go in and you fire 5.5 million rounds a month uh, you're going to create refugees yeah okay well here's a, a representative a representative talking about what she thought of those people that were bombarded all day every day and but we're we're gonna go way down this little rabbit hole today so that um, there's a fair narrative out there to work with for people instead of this knee-jerk reaction that you're not gonna listen to Jack he's like the Syrian refugees I'm like are you kidding me I'm about to fly to Paris and shoot him in the head myself. I mean, I do, I am not okay with Syrian refugees. I'm not okay with terrorists. You know, I'm okay with putting them down, blacking them out. Just put a piece of brass in their nocular cavity and end their miserable life. I'm good. <laughs> it's like the wacky morning show. Going to Paris to put a bullet in the head of a bunch of innocent people is herself stating she wants to go over there and be a terrorist. She has her own radio show. She obviously has a platform and on a blog and all those other things. So she speaks to a large audience and a receptive audience. She has a responsibility. Fortunately, she's, she's advocating murder. She's advocating. No, I cut him off. She's advocating death, terrorism. And does she understand 5.5 million rounds a month? How about if somebody come into her community and fired 5.5 million rounds a month every month for nine years? And how about if those people raped 290,000 of their own, how many would they rape in her community? And they're firing 5.5 million rounds a month. Okay, but it doesn't stop there, see? Let me see, uh, here's a one that I made, I don't know if I ever published this one online or not, but I chopped up one day in frustration let me get rid of that extra stream I got over here. I'll bring that up to what we're doing that. Why not, all right? And task manager. So we get the stream over here on the laptop. We're gonna kill Adobe Flash. Bye bye Adobe. No harm. No no offense. And that shouldn't be showing up like that, but hey. Oh, I know what I did wrong. I should have came over this way. <laughs> and thirst, divine Mickey. Dana is right. Help fight with dollars. You can donate at the nuclearproctologist.org and at PayPal by typing in Dana Durmford at hotmail.com. So let's keep going. Hi, Jan, everybody. I just came over to say hi to everybody for a quick hellos. Quick hellos. Okay, so this next video that I'm going to play, <coughs> it's a short one that I made up. And they're going to talk, one of the things they're going to talk about, the whole video, I put it together just to have this one message that there was a bomb a minute. Not counting the 5.5 million rounds a month, every month. Okay, but a bomb a minute. Uh -huh. Shouldn't have clicked shit, Dana. <laughs> but this is important. And so, why not get on with it? I don't know. Here we go. Peace, hope, spade in the last hours before the deadline. Everybody in the world watched the moment approach with a kind of dread. It was time for the ground troops to liberate Kuwait. We don't know if President Bush read his horoscope on deadline day. It has to be very difficult to be an Iraqi soldier and uh, sit there night after night, day after day, and endure the pounding that he's taken. We have no argument with the people of Iraq. We struck all day and all night. For the innocents caught in this conflict, I pray for their safety. The coalition averaged one bombing mission per minute. Allied bombing was relentless. It was extremely demoralizing. By the uh, B-52s, the F-16s, the A-10s, 
in uh, bringing large amounts of munitions to bear against him. Vividly described by one of the POWs, said the airplane that they feared most on the front lines were the A-10s because their accuracy of using the POW's words. Absolutely phenomenal. They never missed. Of course, but we have not heard. I think it's important to stress. One bombing mission per minute. Every minute of the hour, the men and women of CBS News Worldwide are standing by to bring you reliable, responsible, and steady coverage, day or night, of developments in the Gulf, and to do their best to explain them. There. And it happens to be uh, in an area where civilians live. Uh, it would still be important, I believe, for Excuse the United me, General, States to take uh, I hate to interrupt you, General, but uh, there are air raid sirens in Dharan, Saudi Arabia. That is the largest U.S. base. We're going to go to Bob Simon in Dharan, Saudi Arabia. Bob? Dan, I don't know how good this audio is, but the siren started about 30 seconds ago. Well, Cheryl, it was almost exactly two hours ago when the sirens went off here in Saudi Arabia. Where we are in eastern Saudi Arabia, there was... It's no problem. Let me just size my mask and fit it for a second, just like I always do. Stand by, please. All right. I'd say... Yeah. Yeah. I have to apologize for that. I, I caught a whiff of something and felt momentarily uh, dizzy. You're more experienced <laughs> military affairs than I am. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this country so much. You guys just don't have a clue. Good night, Charles. Good night, Dan. Good night, Leslie. Good night, gentlemen. Good night, Ben. Good night, Mama. Good night, Daddy. Good night, children. Good night, Daddy. Good night, Elizabeth. Good night, Jim Boy. Good night, Jim Bob. Good night, Jim Bob. Good night, Jim Bob. <laughs> What's going on? I was asleep. What are you doing? Good night, Jim Bob. <laughs> 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 now I remember that clip. Okay. Oops. <laughs> Five point five million rounds a month and, and a bomb a minute for nine years. Two hundred ninety thousand rapes. How many raping in the own country? in their countries they're occupying. Woo, <coughs> <coughs> where'd that come from? Uh, but that's the way it is sometimes, right? And bomb a minute. <laughs> so that A-10 Warthog, all that shoots is uh, depleted uranium, right? That's all that shoots is depleted uranium. Where's that tilt? I'll find it, hang on. I lost I lost a plot here somewhere. I'll get it. Hang on. But anyway, the A ten Warthog shoots a ton and a half a minute of depleted uranium rounds. Now McAllister McAllister, Oklahoma. I'm sorry, did I have that too loud that time? Oops. McAllister, McAllister, Oklahoma. Um, bomb manufacturing facility only makes dirty bombs, depleted uranium rounds. That's all the A-10 Warthog shoots is dirty bombs. And it shoots around a ton and a half a minute. And this stuff went through a chain reaction, so it has extra electrons added onto it. It's not like the normal uranium you would find in the ground. You don't measure that in Beckles, you measure that in milligrams. And so the radiation, and that's evident in... in um, drinking water standards for North America, right? Let me show anybody that if I got it there. Who knows anymore? Okay, I'm not gonna go flicking through all that because I'll lose track of what I'm trying to do. And we got a lot to get through. Okay, um... Dr. James Hansen, no, that's not the video we're looking for. Okay, I think we got through the the stuff that I wanted to, to run through about the war. Let's come back over to this stuff here. Okay, so how do you get a moral high ground at 5.5 million rounds a month to get 10,000 Taliban and 22,000 drone strikes in uh, India or Pakistan? 
to get the, whatever's left of the 10,000. Then they went into Syria, Lebanon, and Egypt. I'm sorry, um, Yemen, Somalia. They went all over the planet. They bombed the crap out of everything. And 5.5 million rounds a month, I can assure you, their gun shoots more than that every minute. But that is a list of the people they want you to troll. And so for the Taliban and the Mujahideen and, and organizations like that, they were created by the governments of America and Britain uh, to overthrow puppet dictators that they had in place at the time. And so the idea, and also to push Russia out. Now you see, Russia just pushed itself back in and is not taking a nuclear strike off the table just yet for ISIL. And ISIL is a direct creation of the Taliban. The same people who control the Taliban, the CIA, the Americans, and the British, are the same people that are funding and organizing and creating and propagating out uh, ISIL. And so, how is it that 5.5 million rounds a month, let me come back to that for you, so how can you fire 5.5 million rounds a month to get 10,000 people? Because that's what they're going to do again, right, for ISIL. But how do you fire 5.5 million rounds a month every month, month in, month out, year after year, raping 29,000 of your own, 22 veterans committing suicide every day, millions being raped in the country they're occupying, but there's already millions dead, millions missing, millions in refugee camps. And so let's go over and cover some of that. Because that's get you know, that's the problems where we can't have a real conversation about what we got done, what how we're doing it, and what and how can we justify five point five million rounds a month every month to get ten thousand gangbangers with uh, with automatic weapons and everything else they got is given to them by the military industrial machine. They got to have an enemy to test their new weaponry out on. But hey, wait a second. This is 2015. Why are we mass murdering ourselves? Why are we uh, taking over all the countries for their natural resources so we can go to more wars, to build more weapons? Why are we still doing that? What kind of friggin' society have we turned into? When we, when we commu created communities, we also created light, uh, telephone poles, and we created highways, and we created infrastructure. And we created uh, land titles and, and everything else that are established throughout the world as, as a benchmark for society. That we have communities and roads and highways. And just because there's 10,000 gangbangers allegedly in a country, yet we know they're created by the government themselves, how does that, how do we send our children as fodder? for these wars. Why would we do that? Why would we allow 29,000 of our children to be raped every year? Why do we allow 22 of our of those children every day to commit suicide? 300 rapes a day in the military. And then look at what they're doing to the countries they're occupying. But then we we collectively punish the entire country by firing 5.5 million rounds 5.5 <coughs> 5 million rounds a month into their communities, into their water, into their farmlands, and the majority of this is dirty bullets, dirty bombs. But yet, we propagate out that we're worried the terrorists are going to get dirty bombs, and so that on the internet, we have to censor everything on the internet, and we have to look at everything you're doing, because the terrorists, so-called, that are created and funded by Al-Qaeda, 5.5 million I'm sorry, Obama a minute. There's 1,440 minutes in a day. These are big bombs. These wreck entire neighborhoods. But what does 5.5 million rounds a month do? Does anybody get that? Anybody, anybody wrap their mind around that? Let's keep going. We only got a little bit more on this subject to get through. Then we're just going to jump to Fukushima. And... An organic slant put out a really good video. Um, so we're going to do some really jumping around here. 
And so we got all these wars going on and everything else. And there's 27,000 children starving to death daily. 27,000 children. But they're, they're also dying of pneumonia and dysentery and diarrhea. And all of them could be cured for um, for about one one thousandth of what it costs to fire 5.5 million rounds a month every month in Iraq. And so you can end all that misery with just salt. Do you get it? Okay, and so that's okay, right? And I don't expect everybody to get it, but I know some people out there will watch this in the future and today, and they kind of got an idea now. There's another narrative when it comes to war that they should really consider and that they got to open up the world and not be afraid to look at stuff with an, with an open heart, with an open mind, because how else are you ever going to know the difference? How are you ever going to see both sides of the equation? How can you justify 5.5 million rounds a month for 10,000 gangbangers and, and a bomb a minute? These are big bombs. And then the depleted uranium that was fired into that country, just in Iraq alone, if we're talking about Syria too and everywhere else, but just like the evidence is that in Fallujah, because of what the British done there in particular, not just the British, but... They fired so much depleted uranium uh, that 80%, 84% of the women in Fallujah have deformed babies without eyes or faces or limbs or just lumps of flesh. And a lot of them still have those children. But the majority of the women now won't have a baby. But the ones that did are trying to care for the children and a lot of them had to give up the baby because they, were, they had 5.5 million rounds a month for nine years and they were raped to death, literally, throughout the country. We know, you know, and I never imported the video on your show, now I'm sorry I didn't, but there, there's a video you'll find on the internet of a soldier talking about how he killed a whole family and took the 15-year-old and pimped her out to all the soldiers and then, and then shot her. But he made 65 bucks off her, $5 a pop or something. And he came back home and he was telling it to all of his friends who were drinking in the shed in somebody's back garden. And somebody turned on their phone and then put it up on the internet. And that's a real story. But what, what does 5.5 million rounds a month really mean to you? How about if you live in a big city and someone, every month for nine years, 5.5 5 million rounds a month. And so trolling ISIS day by a group known as Anonymous, and I was Anonymous, right? Scientology, now people don't know that because you keep, you're supposed to keep secret, but I was, for a number of years, when Anonymous first started up, uh, I was on the internet as an Anonymous, in my spare time, every day, for just a little chunk of my day, and putting out data to try to defeat people that would blatantly brainwash people that was something I had come and understood and, and sourced out and vetted and verified. <coughs> now ISIS uh, is mostly ran by uh, foreign governments and mercenaries and everything else and, or, and, and weapon manufacturers and everything else like that and control freaks in corporations. And so I'll end all this on, by saying that, you know, Americans has the constitutions, Canadian has the Bill of Rights, um, Britain has the Magna Carters. But America's constitution had an amendment there originally uh, for slaves. And the amendment was to free slaves from an oppressive government, to give them uh, the same liberties and freedoms as everybody else in that country. Now that amendment was manipulated in increments over decades to give corporations rights. And so what happened was corporate corporations piggybacked up on slavery law in increments over decades and got themselves what's known as corporate personhood because nobody opposed it. Nobody realized it was going on. Nobody cared about it. Everybody was trying to, too busy trying to survive. 
And that's still going on today, of course. But And what happens, in, and it's still going on today, is corporation gets more and more human rights. But in 1939, uh, Justice Hugo Black had wrote an eloquent dissent of how absurd it was that an amendment meant to free slaves from an oppressive government, this is Supreme Court Justice Hugo Black in 39, 1939, had already recognized how absurd it was for an amendment meant to free slaves from an oppressive government was being used by corporations now to oppress the sovereign people. But that was 1939. We're in 2015. And they have taken this to the extreme of 5.5 million rounds a month and using the mainstream media as a bludgeoning tool to any opposition. And then using the blogs to ridicule and marginalize and demonize uh, anybody that gets any traction. And we see that in every aspect of, of every bad corporate personhood entity on the planet. Now you can end all of this uh, because they're unaccountable. So the weapons manufacturer can't go to jail. Just like uh, Google Leary Smith can't go to jail. Larry Page can't go to jail. And they can't go to jail because they have corporate personhood. And corporate personhood means that the corporation can't go to jail because it's a person. But it's an illegal amendment that's causing all these problems and all these issues and all this waste and all this misery and all this viciousness. And so Eric Smith can't get a criminal record. Larry Page can't get a criminal record. Google can't get a criminal record. They can only get a fine. You can get a criminal record and you can't do things for the rest of your life. They can't get a criminal record and they can continue to uh, exploit that till, for the rest of its existence. And after they die, that corporate personhood lives forever. So there is an immortality on this planet It's called corporate personhood. It can live forever. And it can create misery forever. And it's unaccountable forever. And so that's what the weapons manufacturing and the nuclear industry and everybody else is dependent upon. You not being able to understand that. You being not able to comprehend that. You not being able, you feeling powerless against an illegal amendment to your constitutions. And then that was married to the Canadian Bill of Rights and married to the Mary, uh, UK's Magna Carta. But then all the democratic countries adopted this illegal amendment to the Constitution. And because of that, and I'll just end on this, you know, with, and because of these corporations, they don't put their money in your country either. They put it in offshore accounts so they don't even pay state, federal, local, provincial taxes. And so your communities have to cannibalize you because when these corporations come into your community, like uh, Walmart and, say, uh, McDonald's and Tim Hortons, they kill every operation, mom and pop operation in the community that did pay taxes. And so now the community can't tax these big uh, corporate personhoods because they'll get sued and the community will lose a lot more money because it takes money to pay. And so they'll beat them up seven ways to Sunday for 20 years before they, even if you do win, before they get a nickel. And by then, everybody that was angry don't even exist anymore in the capacities. And that's so important. That is so vital. Uh, and so that's why they can spray Agent Orange. That's chemtrailing. Think about that. For nine years over Vietnam, they sprayed uh, a banned substance on the entire planet now, but they, they fuddled the research on this substance and then they carried out a chemical war. That's a chemical war against every insect, every plant, every species, and every uh, human in that country. And there's three million children there with deformities and disabilities and with no one to love them or take care of them or hold them or hug them uh, forever. And that will be victimized forever because of their inability to, to uh, live, live a normal life because of what was done to them. But the war in Vietnam ended because 10,000 of their commanders were shot by the troops. And that these planes were shot at in the sky. And they used to go out over the ocean and dump their loads. Because their own troops were firing at them. And that's why when they went into uh, Kuwait in 1991 and fired all that depleted uranium... Before they went to war, the day before they went to war was when they finally got their hands on live munitions. 
because they learned their lesson from the Vietnam War, that the, the atrocities can only be carried out for so long that the troops will turn on you because they have a conscience, and that the people that went to the military schools didn't, and that they, they, their loved ones were the wealthy ones in, in uh, industry and communities throughout the country. And so they went to private military school, and so those people were killed off, about 10,000 of them during the Vietnam War, and so the, wealth, the wealthy uh, had felt that pain also for the first time in history at, at that kind of enormity. And that the pilots, the, the, the unconscionable pilots who were spraying default, what they call defoliage, which, which, which is a, a toxin and a dioxin throughout the entire country, the pilots were being shot at by their own troops and vilified in, in the barracks and in the restaurants and anywhere else as scum of the earth for spraying their own troops. But at the same time, they had woken up and said, we're not going to burn villages and kill women and children anymore. And you could be executed for any of those words. And so it was easier just to, to, to flag these guys by throwing a grenade in their tent and then shooting at trees and saying we're under attack. And that's what they done. So it was endless atrocities, endless atrocities carried out in the name of... Um, terror. But who's the real terrorist at 5.5 million rounds a month that's raping their own 290,000 times in a decade and raping millions in the countries they're occupying? And then the people who propagate that out and say, we got to go down and shoot people in the head. There's a whole cult around this. And so let's jump over and talk about nuclear for a bit. Um... Let me get my act together here. Give me one moment. It only takes me a second. And let's hope that works. Who knows with me? I don't know what I'm doing sometimes. Okay, I got it. So that's what you see. Let's zoom in on that for a second. I'll just run you through some of this. That's the fallout from three or more nuclear clouds from above ground detonation across America. Do you live anywhere in those spots? Is there anywhere there where you think you would be safe. Because this is, you got to realize this stuff is picked back up and re-liberated through rain and snow, through wash, through automobiles, through industry, through food and everything else. Now this is a map of what the FBI said would happen to America if Russia attacked them. But think about what they done to them. This is just some of the actual follow patterns throughout the country. Yeah? But think about how to have nuclear waste throughout your country. Why do they have the nuclear waste sites if it's like a banana, right? Why do they have all these tonnages? These are all tonnages. So that all of that has to vent into your community. Uh -huh. Dana, get your act together. Dana, what's wrong, Dana? You can't operate simple, stupid equipment? Oh yeah, I'm zoomed in on... Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let's zoom out then. Solution for everything, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's just now. All of these sites are venting into your communities all the time, but this is not all the secret buried sites that they got there. Even though all of these sites are leaching into your water table, this is crazy stuff. All the elements. The reason they got them on these sites is because they're not like bananas, potato chips, walking in sunshine, getting on an airplane, sleeping next to anybody, or the natural radiations on the planet. That stuff has an atomic weight. What the chain reaction done was it gave it a new atomic weight by bombarding it with neutrons, and it accepts it as electrons. Now it has a new atomic weight. So now it's man-made. And so that's why you see all those numbers, and that's why you see these patterns of fallout throughout the country, and that's why the FBI said that's what would happen to your country. It didn't say your country would be full of bananas and potato chips, so don't worry about it. It said, look, look, that would be radiation fallout. But the atmospheric services said, look, that's fallout. And these are three bomb tests. And that's the result over the whole lifespan of nuclear so far. And so I'm just going to run you through some of this stuff here. Um... I'm going to whip this up and move it a little bit. So bear with me. 
uh, Asian professor, global warming deniers should be sentenced to death. Now, all of these people have one thing in common I'm going to show you is they propagate out nuclear as carbon-free. But carbon-free just killed the Pacific Ocean. It just killed the Pacific Ocean. So before I, I go down that road with you, before I go down that road with anybody, let me explain the reactors from Capable. Uh, we'll just run through this one. Fukushima. I better do some fancy footwork here before I do anything, huh? Just give me one second. Because we know how this is going to work. I'm going to get small pictures and big pictures. So let me move myself over just a little tiny bit. We'll be okay in a second. Bear with Dana. Uh -huh. Ooh, we'll get it. Damn it. Stop doing that, Dana. Okay, I got it. How's, uh, let's go move me over a little tiny bit. Move me up. Let's see if I can stay in view while we're chatting here. Fukushima had a 9.0 earthquake. That earthquake ran through the country at 9,000 miles per hour. It was felt in Florida uh, 30 minutes later. It was considered a thousand times worse than Haiti and that it shook the country for six minutes originally. But it shook the country, the aftershocks, about 100 times that day and about 5,000 times in the next year. All right. Uh, 50 minutes after the earthquake, that shook the entire country for six minutes. Split the roads in Tokyo, blah, blah, blah. You know, it, it tore roads apart 10 feet where you would run into a 10-foot wall if you were driving down the road when it happened. Uh, a tsunami ran through the country. And that just come in at 600 miles an hour. A tsunami does not just come in and hit Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station. So we got some more clips we're going to get to right away. And so the water ran to the power plant. That disabled. Now, you remember that clip I was playing earlier for you about you got to worry about the plants losing power. I got another clip coming up for you about that to put you on target in a few moments. The reactors detonated at the Fukushima that we know about. They had meltdowns. This is unit one. It's 100% meltdown, uh, melt through, and a melt out. Uh, just for words, Fukushima has four meltdowns. Unit 1 that you're looking at right behind yeah. Unit 2 coming up, Unit 3, and Unit 4 coming up. Okay, and, and that's Unit 1, that's Unit 2. These are 100% meltdown, melt throughout. These are many times Chernobyl. This is Unit 3. You don't have to really work too hard to work that one out, do you? That's Unit 4. <clears throat> now, Unit 4 lost its inventory by March the 18th. I've said that many times, and so soon I'm going to have to make another couple of videos on Unit 4 because there's so much data. But anyway, Unit 4, they tore it all apart. That's what's left. It went from here, 10 stories, down to here, whatever you want, whatever that might be. They built a structure up alongside of it, but they claim in, these are official pictures. Inside it looks like that, but we got to pump water in through a pump like that. But it looks like that on the inside, but we got to keep doing that. Right, and so this claim the roof looks like that, but yet it looks like that. And that we know these are all meltdowns. Now we know they never got power in there because it looks like that through hundreds of miles of the country. Once again, the tsunami doesn't just come straight in like that, right? And we know there's radiation throughout the country because they have 9.9, .9, 9 million bags like that. And if you don't understand that, just give me a second, I'm going to bring up. Uh, the headline. I'll bring, oh, I better bring you over there. Ain't no good if I don't bring you over there. Uh, uh, over there. Uh, uh, get rid of that. So, 9 million bags throughout the country. Don't worry. At some point, I'll get it together. I'm just kind of all over the place here. And let me fix that right quick. Like I'm some kind of genius or something. <sighs> Where am I to? What am I doing? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Over 9 million bags of nuclear cleanup waste pile up across Fukushima Prefecture. I'm getting there. Bear with me. I forgot. And I don't know how to get this all this stuff. Just, I'm learning, okay? I'm learning. We had 9 computers hacked already in the last year and a half. And so 9 million bags across the Fukushima Prefecture, December 10, 2015. 
The number of bags of waste from decontamination efforts around the stricken number one nuclear plant reached a little under 9.16 million. That's got to be a shitty job to get out and count all that stuff. What kind of Geiger counter do you, you need? 2,000 Geiger counters calibrated to 2,000 ISIS. Anyway, we got an extinction event playing out. People better get your acts together. <laughs> Just saying. Let's keep going. So 9 million bags a month. Think about it. 9 million bags a month. 9 million bags a month. Now, if they got 9 million bags just in Fukushima Prefecture, how much has gone into the ocean? Huh? How much do you think went into the jet streams? Huh? Now, how about the fact that Fukushima, compared to Chernobyl, Fukushima lasted 10 days. And it was equal to 400 Hiroshima bombs, right? And so, hang on. We'll cover some of that. 10 days and Ezekiel 4. Now we're going to go to video clips right away, though. But Fukushima, I got too much shit on my computer at this stage. <laughs> I love it, though. Give me a second. I'm going to get rid of a bunch of stuff today. And maybe not. Videl, Hell on Earth. Just going to give me a hard time every time. Whatever. Yikes. Okay, let's go this way. Maybe this will make more sense. Hell on Earth. Chernobyl was the world's worst environmental disaster. It was equal to 400 Hiroshima bombs. The third sentence down over 10 days. Right? And so that's what I mean by Chernobyl lasted 10 days. Fukushima didn't stop. Okay. And so... The National Geographic says the sea stars die. This was April of 2015 this year. A sea stars die. No worries about the urchins. And so what they done was they they covered. They covered um, four sites along 200 miles between Point Conception and Santa Catalina Island, and at a fifth site off Baja, California. Now because of that, they declared a, a mass mortality event. Okay, so what me, Dana, and the hounds in Fukushima done was we launched an expedition and we covered uh, 15,000 miles of the coastline of British Columbia, Canada, which is directly across from Fukushima. The currents come right across in 45 days because the Kurosha current is real and it came across by jet stream in three and a half days because the jet streams are real at 100 miles per hour, 24 hours a day. So we covered 15,000 miles of coastline, and instead of looking like it should look through it to 15,000 miles that I went over, instead of looking like that, it was naked. There's less than 100 species out of the 5,600 species, and we know that because we cut down the whole coastline for 260 days and 15,000 miles. <coughs> Who knows what I got done now? Hang on. Yeah, I got to keep forgetting that I zoomed in on that TV set, don't I? <coughs> Gee, I got a hard hack here today. So 15,000 miles of the coastline, the coastline is stripped. And so what that means is that the 5,600 species didn't receive the coastline. Now, what that also means is that the 4 million other species in the ocean didn't receive the coastline also. And so to finish up on those uh, sentences, think about... Now we have these missing species in the Pacific Ocean. Phytoplankton, krill. These are the very bases of the food chain for everything else, particularly the anchovies, the sardines, the squid, the herring, and the salmon. But also all the mammals and animals and birds and migratory, mass migratory uh, flocks are dependent upon the krill. And the krill are dependent upon the phyto phytoplankton. The phytoplankton is the basis of the food chain, the oxygen, and the carbon sequestering chain. And so when it comes to oxygen, it's 50% of the oxygen on the planet coming from the Pacific Ocean. And so that's also the basis for the food chain. And then krill converts all of this and the zooplankton and the pods and everything, the phytoplankton, into energy that's now consumable, can fit on a fork or for the other animals. You get how that works? If not, it's your better luck next time. Um, and so Chernobyl... 
uh, was one third the size of any of the reactors in Japan. Once again, Chernobyl only lasted 10 days. But Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown on top of that. So Chernobyl wasn't a whole meltdown. Chernobyl was just a 30% meltdown. Fukushima was one third the size of energy reactors in Japan. Fukushima or Chernobyl was a candlestick compared to any of the reactors in Japan. Japan had four full meltdowns. And Japan's reactors were completely different. Okay, and... Let's have a look at this stuff, for starters. Rain with 20 million particles. 20 million particles, just in a liter. In a liter. In a liter. That would be catastrophic if it fell across your country. Just, or one of your cities. So what is it when it falls but a liter? Because does rain fall by the liter only? Does it stop after the liter and say, okay, that's enough for you. And does radioactive iodine and see, only got an eight-day half-life. But half-life are times 10, and so it's 80 days. And so 80 days, uh, there's 10 times more 132. 30 times more 133. 31 times more 130. And hang on a second. Let's come back over. Let's keep going. And there's 31 times more 129 with a 15 million year half-life of all you're doing. But then, you know, curium never gets mentioned. And curium is a, is 100% man-made. And curium is full of man-made isotopes through the neutrons and electrons, bombardment of the chain reaction. And so that never gets mentioned. All you talk about is the iodine with an eight-day half-life. Curium is like plutonium mamericium, right? We know that from studies by Dr. Raymond Gilmetti from Loveless Respiratory Research Institute. Well, we might. Not today, unfortunately. Um, okay. I can find that if I tried. How hard could it be to find anything on my computer, huh? Well... Let's come look at that for a second. Dr. Raymond Gilmetti from Loveless Respiratory Research Institute in New Mexico. Um, so this is a model of inhaled curium. 1987 or 89, I'm sorry. Uh, so curium isotopes are the major byproduct in irradiated nuclear reactor fuels and comprise a significant fraction. They're the major byproduct, major byproduct. Major byproduct. Major byproduct. Toxicity inhaled plutonium dioxide in beagles. And so that study uh, of 144 beagle dogs just inhaled one of two sizes. One of two sizes. And so the study showed, look at the bottom. These findings in dogs suggest a similar dose-related biological effects could be expected in humans accidentally exposed to 238 plutonium. So look at the third sentence from the top. Tumors of the lung, skeletal, and livers occurred beginning at about three years after exposure. Huh? Bone tumors found in 93 dogs were the most common cause of death. Huh? Lung tumors found in 46 dogs were the second most common cause of death. Huh? Liver tumors were found in 20 dogs were the cause of death in only two dogs because they had, all of them had at least three different tumors from the one isotope. What? Dana, what? What are you saying, Dana? I'm saying that he killed Beagle and dogs for 35 years. Right? He killed Beagle, dogs, and puppies for 35 years. Sorry. Beagle, dogs, and puppies for 35 years. <coughs> Dr. Raymond Gilmitty from Loveless Respiratory Research Institute in New Mexico. I know it's New Mexico, but... <laughs> sue me. But... Um, now, from there, we're going to go to the videos. Okay? Now, I've set the stage. I explained to you about Fukushima. I explained to you about the tsunami. Explain to you about Fallout in North America a little tiny bit. And so now we're going to jump over. Here's another model from America coming up. If I get my act together while we're waiting to get to the hit, hit, uh, clips that I got coming up for you. And so we got another six or seven clips to get through. 
These are all short clips, but uh, they're difficult clips. Uh, so, the model you're looking at alongside of me is based upon a seven, I'm sorry, several days releases from a single reactor. It's not based upon the ongoing constant, endless perpetual motion machine. Um, that Chernobyl, uh, Chernobyl only lasted 10 days. Fukushima never stopped, right? Uh, and so, this model is only based upon something like Chernobyl where it stopped after 10 days. But it's not based upon, it's not even based upon something like that in reality. It's only based upon a couple of days releases from a single reactor from the fuel pool. None of that models I got are from the reactors. Okay, so let's get on with some clips. Dana, stop with the jabbering. Okay, and so this is when the, after the accident, they, TEPCO put out a call. And so here's uh, somebody reporting on that. Don't verify the report, you don't know the accuracy of the report. That's why when these workers told me, do you know we are actually living in a in a shanty town? I can show the photograph. Literally on a pavement, in a non-used pavement between the railway station, there were plastic cuts where people were living. In Japan, in Tokyo. This is not Bombay. So I it actually astounded me that these things were happening. And then they told me that there are people who come take them, they give them X amount of money because they have been working as contract workers for, for God knows how many years. So they are the people available. They have the skills. They are ready to go into the fire and die. Other people are not ready to do it. So what I'm saying is, so when a report like this comes out, you can't just paint it as, oh, it's X, Y, Z. You have to be careful in scrutinizing it. So you need proper scrutiny. And what is happening is we don't, it's a good thing that you started to actually start criticizing them. Nobody's been criticized. Nobody's criticizing uh, as the rapporteur. Um, you know, because the homeless are being picked up and brought to Fukushima. You're not seeing Harvard or Yale or Berkeley or Stanford or MIT or Oxford or any of these academics from any of the institutions on the planet whatsoever. All you're seeing is the immigrants who don't speak the language and the homeless and the destitute and the victims of society itself in that country. Now, all the studies about radiation, um, this is MIT uh, three days after Fukushima and just a snippet, uh, the context is all the studies that they use for radiation now, Dr. Gil, Raymond Gilmedy, like I showed you earlier, is not used uh, in this context, see? But what they're going to talk about is what they use. They don't talk about Raymond Gilmedy studies, which I showed you was uh, considered the equivalent of what could happen to the humans, what happened to the beagle dogs, right? Okay, so here's MIT, uh, Jacqueline Possibly Yates. on the phone, although I don't see a phone, uh, 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 Jackie Yanch, who's in Spain. Jackie, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Fantastic. Uh, <laughs> until last year, Jackie was a professor uh, in the Department of Nuclear Science and Engineering. She continues to be affiliated with us, and she's a specialist on radiation health effects. I'm here. I'm sorry, I didn't quite get the question. Uh, the question had to do with what are the prospects for long-term contamination in the area around the reactor? I think that was the question. In terms of the amount of release or the consequences of of a release, I mean, there's been very little that seems to have been uh, released and dispersed uh, beyond the containment. Now, unfortunately, we have very little data, almost no data, about how much radiation we can live with at, at in terms of elevated background levels. All of our data come about the health effects of radiation come from a situation which all the doses delivered in uh, less than a minute. And so we just don't know how much radiation can be, uh, what, what kind of contamination level can be, considered, can be considered safe. I mean, some parts of the world. Okay, they don't know what parts 
because they're all their doses that they're using for modelings are based upon a single release from a single, I'm sorry, just a single minute exposure. But uh, why not include Dr. Raymond Gilmetty? Why not look at his studies and then look at your last sentence? These findings in dogs suggest similar dose related biological effects could be expected in humans accidentally exposed to Fukushima. Yeah? Okay. Okay, here's another clip coming up. Um, and this was the rapporteur where this jokester, he's a journalist in Japan, talks about fruit flies. Not Dr. Ray McGill, Medi, and not MIT talking about one single exposure for a single minute. So all of their, their foundation for harm is based upon a single minute. But Dr. Raymond Gilmetty sets the bar, don't he? But here's uh, the PR firms, nuclear PR firms in Japan, talking to the rapporteur about fruit flies. Watch this. Uh, Mr. Grover, uh, my name is Hiroi Kujita. I'm a journalist with the Kokumin Shinbun. I'm not a scientist. I think you're wrong. And I'd like to hear your opinion about my, some of the points I mentioned. First, um, recent correlation between uh, cancer and the radiation started with the fruit fry experiment. Drosophila monogasters. And it was an experiment of the high-dose radiation. However, we extended the you know, power line to uh, zero point. But there is no data to back up the low dose effect. In fact, there are people who say low dose radiation is good. <clears throat> okay, see where I'm going with all of that? See how that works? See the game that you played against you? Do you kind of like understand why this is so important that his studies, particularly on curium too, right? Anytime you're ready, Dina. The curium studies, right, on the dogs were the same results as was on the animals, right? 144 dogs, they all died starting about three years after exposure. And so with radiation fallout, Dina, I'm going to screw this up big time. Right? So with radiation fallout through the ocean, this is only based upon a couple of days releases from a single reactor and just a couple of isotopes, not based upon all of the isotopes. Alrighty, so let's keep going. Um, so, losing power at the nuclear power plant. This is a very short clip. Dr. James Hansen. Now, I got other clips of him there saying that Three Mile Island was equal to flying across the country and flying back again. But nevertheless, he does, you got to throw in the truth to convince you, right? And so, do you think this statement coming up doesn't matter? But actually, it does Fukushima is once they lost their power they couldn't cool they couldn't cool the reactors right and so he admitted that see and that's why these reactors detonated because you, you couldn't get power you couldn't get power throughout everywhere that was struck by the tsunami because of that let's go back down and finish out got a few videos left to get through nothing heavy from here on out some good stuff here um, so here's another one in you in UK, when they had an issue, uh, I should turn the volume up this time a little bit just before I even start because I've been doing that on each stream because I just imported this this morning. I've been working on it all night and I had to convert all my clips so they would work on this software and it's just... Okay, here comes another clip and this one is not very long, 15 seconds. When the robots broke down because of the extreme radioactivity, men were sent in to clean up the site. They were not volunteers. They were picked up off the streets and press ganged onto the roof. So Chernobyl, Chernobyl, they picked people up off the street, right? And brought them into Chernobyl. I'm not sure how this is going to work. No clear answers to why so many uh, kids born outside exclusion zone of Fukushima or sick years after the meltdown. Really? And then they claim Fukushima only 7% as bad as Chernobyl. But we know uh, Fukushima was only lasted 10 days. That um, Chernobyl only lasted 10 days. Fukushima didn't stop. That Chernobyl is one-third the size of any of Fukushima reactors. And, four, and Fukushima has four full meltdowns. 
that over a million died from Chernobyl from 3,500 studies translated from Ukraine and published at the New York Science Academy of Medicine. We know that Kafiana said in 2000 that there was 3 million children with permanent disabilities uh, from Chernobyl and that at Fukushima they claimed nobody died. And I have um, many, many different ways of contesting that and wrecking that narrative. And we'll get to that uh, maybe some other time. But we've done it many times. In Chernobyl, they abandoned the homes and the villages and plowed them down, a uh, majority of them. In Fukushima, you get a free home if you're pregnant. So these people are lost touch with reality. In Chernobyl, you're using graphite fuel, one third the size, 30% meltdown of any of the reactors. In Japan, there, you were using MOX fuel. So Unit 3 in Japan, let me get rid of this. Unit, unit 3 in Japan, there's so much jumping sometimes, eh? That's okay too. Unit 3 in Japan, Dana, anytime you're friggin' ready. Can't wait all day, Dana boy. So Unit 3 in Japan was Mox Fuel, right? So MOX fuel is 2 million times worse than any other reactor currently on the planet. Currently on the planet. 2 million times worse. <coughs> okay, let's... Now, the title of the video was uh, Troll Oisel Day and Nuclear Boils 10 Trillion Billion Creatures a Minute. 10 billion trillion creatures a minute. Okay, so what James Hansen and Keith uh, Snow was talking about, uh, fuel pools losing power, was they would boil the water off. They boil off 120,000 liters a day anyway, right? And so if you can't get in there and restore power, these things melt down in 90 minutes. That's the concern. That has always been the concern. And this is stuff that I talk about repeatedly, I know, but that's what the world needs to know. That's what the world has to understand. That's what the reality of this issue actually is, is that the whole coastline was inundated with this debris. And the fact that uh, we are burying our heads while we had the death of the Pacific Ocean, which we proved, right? We went out in the boat and we proved that. And I'm not going to do that right now, but let's keep going. We've got a couple more clips to get through. I'm screwing up with the title sometimes. Um, okay, so Unit 4 in Fukushima. You know, Jan Brooks, Miss Milky was... Um, I put up an um, organic slant video at her site about Unit 4 Hillary Clinton's emails also, right? Very important video, extremely important video. Done a wonderful job in that video. And he's a really good blogger, uh, and he's very honest. And here's Seth Dorn saying he's inside. Okay, i got to set this one up. Now, Seth Dorn, he says he's inside of this building. Yeah? He says he's inside of that, what's left of it, right? Because it looked like that, now it looks like that, and then he built a structure alongside of it, but that's not in the structure. We're talking about the fuel pool that's in the building. We're not talking about... A structure they built there to trick you and say, oh no, that is inside the structure. That is inside the structure. Well, then why do you need that? <laughs> and if it looks like that, what's the issue? Well, because it looks like that. But Seth Dorn from CBS and PBS uh, is now going to take you inside that fabled reactor and show you a beautiful symmetrical building with people inside of it, including himself. It's a green screen for sure. Okay, here we go with Seth Dorn. It's just a very tiny short clip. The decommissioning work taking place here. Well, let's try that again. Of the decommissioning work taking place here in Re Reactor 4. It got cut off on me. Okay, but anyways, you have to take my word today, and I'll fix that. Reactor 4. So he's just said, what he's showing you there, look at it really close, is that inside of there. In, actually, in an actuality, ality, uh, is inside of that leftover wreckage. How come you don't see any scaffolding there? Why don't they put a coat of paint on it? Why don't they get up there with the cutting torches and cut all that loose metal off that they tore off with the remote control uh, shovels, right? 
because they don't know what to do. They have no technology, so they come up and told you that it looks like that. And that the roof of it looks like that inside of this. But yet, um, let me show you the rest of this. So this... That's not supposed to make noises when I'm doing that. And if it is, I can't help that. So let's just move ahead. So you see the spent fuel pools on the roof, right? See those two pools alongside of it? Hang on. He just got a little earlier that time. Fuel storage pull. Full fuel porridge. Porridge. Storage. <laughs> That's because I got an echo in my head. I forgot I still had that in my hair. Okay, so the fuel pools were up on both sides of it, right? And the crane was above that. Right, and that's what the, um, this is unit 4, say, for instance, you're looking at, or any of the other reactors. And then, <laughs> they tore all the top stories off it, right? They tore the top top stories off it. You see the bottom um, floor? The one, the one, one of, if you were stood on the bottom floor and the one above your head, that's the one that's left there. Uh, right, that's the one they got there. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the, that's the floor there. The floor doesn't begin at the bottom of that like kind of window you see there, right? No. Floor begins above it, right? And so the reactor is gone, of course. And also uh, the spent fuel pools are gone, completely gone. They're gone. They're totally gone. Because that's what that design is all about. That's that, right, you're looking at it right there, boiling water reactor. And so they tore it all off, right? And Because the fuel pools are gone. Okay, but look at unit three. Do you think the fuel pools are gone out of that one also? Because they're claiming they're going to take the fuel out of the pool in a couple of years. That don't, that's not there. It doesn't exist there. It doesn't exist there because the building is gone. But they're telling you, and you got all the institutions telling you lies, and you got me showing you the documentation. So are you going to believe your own eyes? That's the question. Only question that you should ask yourself. And if so, you're going to believe your own eyes. Then, what else is going on now that your eyes are finally open? So could the expedition for life, the Fukushima's expedition for life, the five of them that we launched on this coastline of British Columbia, now actually? Uh, does it now actually under, do you understand why we done what we done? And that we covered almost 10,000 headlines before we went on the ocean. So we flushed this out really well before um, uh, let me see. So here's Sellafield, England. Now here's what they done in Sellafield, England. And I might have to adjust this audio on the fly if it turns out low. But we're going to jump to it coming up. Here we go to push the burning fuel through uh, into the back of the reactor. But the heat had melted the cartridges, so they'd become stuck inside the core. They were forced to use scaffolding poles they'd found nearby to try and push the cartridges out. Radiation was so intense they could only work a few hours. They were running out of firefighters. The police uh, from the factory had turned up looking for volunteers uh, and they brought a bus and they decided the best way to get the volunteers was to go to the cinema and uh, and volunteer the back two rows uh, at, the, uh, at the show to go into the factory to, uh, as it turned out, to uh, help push the fuel rods out of the, uh, out of the reactor. My cigarettes don't have 9,000 chemicals. And I was going to smoke, and I said, no, I'm not going to smoke, and I doubted it. So, sue me. So they went and picked up people at the theater, the two back rows of theater, right, and brought them to Sellafield and used scaffolding rods to push the rods out. That's a documentary from BBC. They took your loved ones out of the theater. It could be your wife or your child or you put you on a bus and brought you in the cellar field 
because the Sellafield workers wouldn't do it. Because the police wouldn't do it. Because it wasn't like a banana. It wasn't like a potato chip. It wasn't like walking in sunshine. This was real, all of a sudden now. They couldn't joke and lie to anybody anymore, to, and even to themselves anymore. Well, let's go ahead and kidnap a bunch of people out of the back row of a theater. And who cares what happened to them after, right? So look, you know, do you have an accident at WHIP, Dr. John Neal? Everything, it all depends upon the amount. Dr. John Nail, a professor of chemistry at Oklahoma City University, is not very concerned either. And even healthy foods aren't 100% healthy. Most people will get more radiation exposure from eating bananas than they ever will from this New Mexico repository. You can't get more radiation from a banana. You can't get more radiation from a potato chip. It's homeostasis. He's, he's a, 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 a professor, a sitting professor at Oklahoma. Remember, they have um, McAllister in McAllister, Oklahoma. All they make is dirty bombs. And so they rolled out Dr. John, whatever the crap his name is ever going to be. Dr. John Neal, Neal, and he says, oh no, a whip is like a banana. Wait a second, why are they burying it thousands of feet below the ground if it's like a banana? Because it's not like a banana, but this is what they've had to do f for the last 70 years. And so, now think about whip. Uh, listen to this clip coming up. A fire has shut down the whip site in Carlsbad. Officials say a truck hauling salt caught fire about 11 this morning in an area underground. All employees were quickly evacuated, but several were taken to the hospital for potential smoke inhalation. WIP officials say their emergency plan was put into place. Okay. Don't do that, Dana. So they got a truck fire. That's in the very back of the mine, right? Now the mine is a great big, it's got 55 football fields. Do you think a truck is going to contaminate a football field, a burning truck. What would you do? Get on the other side of it, right? Well, the mines got these winds coming through the mine. So all you would do is get on the other side of the truck, grab a fire extinguisher, and put it out. No, they abandoned the mine because they had a truck fire, yeah? Okay, well, here's a 10-second clip that might help you. ...had already been suspended a week and a half ago after a truck caught fire in the underground facility where a radioactive waste... So, so work had been, this is after a week later, they had, this because that was February the 14th, right? But a week later, they said they had an accident there. But listen to what they say in one of these clips. Is, to get. ...had already been suspended a week and a half ago after a truck caught work. fire in the underground facility where radioactive waste is... So, there was no one down under the ground because they had a truck fire a week ago. In, in 55 foot field, field size caverns somewhere. And so they never went back down for a whole week because a truck fire is the most dangerous thing on this planet. And because of that truck fire, they're still not back down there. <laughs> we should get all the trucks off the highway. Every friggin' one of them. Dana. I'm all over the place, I know. So 1157. Well, the show's over, but I hope that helped everybody understand how crazy and demented and twisted and um, inexcusable this industry really truly is and how heartless the whole industry is on both sides of the table. Not just the war industry. Now we got six or seven million refugees in Syria to get 10,000 ISIS, 10,000 Taliban, 10,000 Hamas. And they got 5 million refugees outside of Israel, or, um, Gaza to get 10,000 Hamas. 10,000 Taliban was enough to wreck Iraq, Afghanistan, Lebanon, Libya, Syria, you know, Somalia. And then the nuclear industry just wrecked the Pacific Ocean because the coastline didn't recede itself. It did not recede itself. We went through the whole coastline, 200, and hang on. We spent 200, I'll get it at some point, or not. 
But anyway, like I showed you earlier, we spent 260 days. You can see the documentation at thenuclearproctologist.org, and you can I'll come over and say hi to everybody. You can see all that documentation up at thenuclearproctologist.org. I didn't have my clip ready, but we're going to play it anyway. We'll come over and say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. I'll get rid of that. Hi, Kate. Good day, Kate. Thank you, Kate. Yeah, Nip Killer, Daniel, uh, Jan Brooks, probably gone off working again. Adam, Dana's right. Mickey, Amters, Joseph, Patrick. Hey, buddy. Mickey again, Starlight. Uh, Mike, uh, Nashville. Everybody, ice cream, you screen, Jan Brooks. Whip is not even on my waist depository map. <laughs> Jan got some of my other map. David, thank you, friend. Starlight, Joseph, everybody, anybody, I'm looking for anybody extra. Illusions is over. Mike, Alex, and Alex, awesome musician. Uh, everybody else, you know. Zigfree, I'm just scroll, scrolling, scrolling, looking for anybody I missed out, and I'm sure I missed tons of you. Can I send my respect? And admiration to Candace and everybody else. Bob, Amthurst, Elaine is out there, we know. Take care, folks. It's been a, an important stream and a, and a vital stream, and then I'm glad it's over because it was a lot of friggin' work today. <laughs> Take care, folks. We are signing off.